It'll be one to go this time, bye. Coming to the green, buddy, coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, 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 take, 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 go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. We're now here from Bill Fleischman with Philadelphia Daily News. Hi, Mark. Uh, Kyle Busch seems to have emerged as the latest villain in, uh, in NASCAR, at least among uh, junior, Dale Jr. fans. Uh, I wonder if you, do you just kind of get amused by, you know, you've been around so long, do you just sort of get amused by these developments, or do you, do you think, uh, I know Humpy has said forever that racing needs a villain. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily uh, completely agree with uh, with the notion that that, that Kyle is a villain, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I do uh, agree with Humpy from the standpoint. I would pick my words a little bit more careful and say that it's good for for the it's good to get the blood blood pumping in NASCAR. Uh, when you have uh, a black hat and a white hat, mm -hmm. um, that tends to get the uh, blood additionally pumping. So um, there's no question that what's transpired, you know, this year uh, with Kyle has um, stirred up interest and got people talking and <clears throat> got people using their voice. Uh, fans using their voices and, uh, and and people are engaged so you know from that standpoint um, you know it's been good for for NASCAR good thank you you're welcome and next we will hear from Rick Minter with Atlanta Constitution good afternoon Mark uh, several years ago, hey. you told us all how good Joey Logano would be years down the road, and that turned out to be true. I was wondering who you think years from now we'll be talking about in a similar sense. Oh uh, well, you know, to be real honest with you, I don't think that uh, NASCAR has ever seen anything quite like Joey Logano. Um, I haven't spotted uh, the next Joey Logano. Um, they are. Far and few, um, but doesn't mean he's not out there. Just uh, you know, uh, because my son raced, um, you know, legends and bandolero or bandoleros, I had a chance to spot Joey when he was ten and see him come along. Um, I know there are some other real prodigies out there, and there are some really special drivers um, out there that are. Uh, just now turning 18, uh, but I don't think there's any anybody in Joey's league, you know, uh, ready to hit the hit the circuit. Um, you know, he's uh, he's going to bring a lot of I I, I predict he's going to bring a lot of excitement to NASCAR yet this year. You'll talk to him a good bit. I talked to his dad more than I talked to Joey, um, but I did talk to Joey after after the race at uh, Rockingham, uh, where he made the competition look uh, uh, embarrassed the competition. Uh, but I talked to his dad more often. Um, his dad is really cool. I like I like Tom a lot. All right, thank you. Next, we will hear from Rusty Baldwin with NASCAR Media. Hey, Mark. I, uh, we kind of feels like now, especially with the chase, the season's really kind of broken up into parts. And we've been home, we will have been home for two weeks in Charlotte. And for the next three months, this is a grueling schedule throughout the summer of June, July, and August. Is this perhaps one of the more important uh, parts of the season? Is this where we're going to see the teams who are really going to succeed? And we're going to see the teams who maybe don't have it all together start to fall apart. And do y'all as drivers just see this summer schedule as, as as the schedule where you the part of the schedule where you've really got to have it together 
it's brutal and it does separate uh, you know it, it tends to separate a, a little a team that that's a little bit uh, uh, less stable can hold on uh, through the beginning third of the season but when it hits this summer stretch that's what really beats you know beats you to your knees and uh, and so it will start you will start to see the teams that really are strong and really have the capability and you know some are comfortably uh, lodged into the chase and may experiment and, and, and do different things uh, and then emerge like uh, like Jimmy Johnson and the 48 team did last year when it was time to go chase racing they were on spot on and before that they didn't seem to be so you'll have teams like that but you'll also have the Kurt Bushes uh, who stormed into the chase, you know, didn't look like they were going to be able to. And so that's the, probably the interesting part uh, from here to, to Richmond is to see who's presently doesn't look like they have what they, what they need to get in there and then just put on a march and battle, you know, their way in uh, a lot like we did you know, uh, back in, uh, I think it was 2004, 2005, or 2005, you know, where didn't think we were going to make it and just, uh, you know, just had a great, great run through the summer and, uh, and snuck in. Great. Thank you.